from today. Thanks for joining us for this Promero sponsored webinar featuring Call Miner. On uh, today's topic, we're going to cover improving customer service sales in compliance with speech analytics. So just kind of the broad use and application of speech analytics. First of all, just to cover some logistics, this webinar will be recorded and available for replay. Usually uh, you'll get an email the next day, so tomorrow, with a link to that replay. Um, but it will probably be up on uh, Call Miner's site and our YouTube channel tonight. Um, all attendees are currently on mute, but if you would like to ask a question uh, for our presenters, please use the question panel in your GoToWebinar Docker on your screen. Uh, we'll do our best to get to all the questions at the end of the presentation. If by chance we don't answer some, we'll certainly follow up by phone or email. And today our speakers are George Gordon from uh, the Executive Vice President of Sales at Primero and Andrew Buckley, Director of Sales Operations at CallMiner. I'm Scott Kendrick, Vice President of Marketing and Product Management at CallMiner, and I'll be moderating today's events. And so to kick us off, I'm going to pass it over to George, and uh, George can provide us an overview of Primero. Hey, guys. Um, I'd like to welcome you, all of you to our Speech and Lakes webinar sponsored by CallMiner Primero. As Scott said, you know, my name is George Gordon. I am the Executive Vice President of Sales at Primero. So let me start by telling you a little bit about Primero. Uh, we were founded in 2001. Uh, as depicted in the slides, and we're headquartered in South Florida. Uh, we have extensive call center experience uh, and a comprehensive solution suite uh, for unified communications and workforce management. Uh, also, for those of you that don't currently have a recording solution, we can assist you in this area as well. This year, uh, it is our distinct pleasure to add call minor speech analytics to our portfolio. Uh, this comprehensive portfolio allows us to offer clients solutions that solve their most complex business challenges. As you probably already know, CallMiner is a provider of marketing-leading speech analytics solutions. So not only did Primero become an authorized reseller of CallMiner, but Primero also became one of CallMiner's first authorized cloud service provider of the CallMiner solution suite. That is why I'm absolutely delighted to introduce you to CallMiner today. Uh, today's webinar will last about 30 minutes, uh, with time available at the end for Q&A. Uh, you're about to hear some very compelling examples of well-known companies across different verticals that gained immediate returns on their investment by using Call minor speech analytics. There is one example of a company whose name was withheld uh, for publicity restrictions uh, due to publicity restrictions, so uh, we apologize for that. Uh, not only will you learn how these companies realize value uh, with speech analytics, but also how all of you could realize similar efficiency and ROI gains. Um, we have hand-picked case studies that cover the gamut of speech analytics benefits in the areas of sales, service, and compliance. So hopefully these will resonate well uh, with your cause and your practice and the challenges that you face uh, day to day. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I will turn things back over to Scott now to kick things off with CallMiner. Scott, back to you. Great. Thanks, George. And as many of you know, speech analytics is a highly sought after technology, but historically it's really been perceived or potentially been perceived as too pricey uh, and an ROI that really w is not within the reach of larger contact centers. Um, uh, or sorry, only in, within reach of the larger contact centers. Uh, and this is why actually we're excited uh, to be working with Primero is to kind of break that barrier or that per perception. CallMiner has been in the speech analytics business since 2002. We're really one of the pioneers in this space. Um, and we are completely specialized on contact analytics uh, and also leveraging contact analytics for optimizing and improving uh, both call center and agent performance. Of course, like the call center has evolved into the contact center, uh, call miner has also evolved. We're not going to change the name of the company to contact miner, but uh, we do allow you an analytical view across your entire um, uh, forms of uh, communications within the contact center. So both voice communication and text communication, such as chat, email, social media interactions. And this provides you a unified view across your entire customer journey. Uh, we service some of the largest contact centers in the world across our platform. We are scaled to more than 15 years of uh, mining, 15 years of audio every day. Uh, our customers range from world-renowned Fortune 500 brands to smaller collections or telesales agencies. And now with our relationship with Primero, uh, speech analytics is really within commercial reach of any small to medium-sized budget. And this is why we're, we're excited to be working with Primero. Um, this is something that they've been experts in. Uh, for years, uh, providing advanced call center solutions to these uh, smaller and medium-sized contact centers. So the partnership made perfect sense for us. 
Um, with that introduction of Call Miner, I'll pass it over to Andrew to walk us through the remainder of the presentation. Great. Thanks, Scott. And uh, again, thanks, everyone, for taking some time to join us here today. Uh, hopefully, you'll gain some good insight into uh, some of the uses of the Eureka platform uh, in some of our customers, many of, uh, many of whom you see uh, here on this slide. Where I'm going to start, though, uh, today is really just focusing in on some of the successes, as George had mentioned, uh, some of the successes that our customers have had utilizing our technology. And kind of what you see here is a representation of some of the customers that utilize our services today across a variety of different vertical markets. Uh, one of the things that you're going to find when you uh, look into our customers is that as we bring them up with the technology, you know, we look at you know, the low-hanging fruit that they can basically target to get, as George had mentioned, a rapid return on investment. Uh, and long-term improvements within their operations center. And you see some of those examples uh, within this slide here and some of the ones that we're going to dig into in just a moment. But you know, some of the examples uh, that you see before you here, you know, organizations like Grubhub that uh, utilize our redaction capability. So while we're going to be focusing in on speech analytics in general, uh, Grubhub is uh, one that, for example, uses our redaction capabilities to make their call recordings PCI compliant. You know, another good example, Blue Green right next to them, who you know, utilize in their timeshare uh, contact center uh, the technology in order to improve their uh, customer satisfaction, improve their uh, insurance sales, but also reduce their operating costs, which is what a lot of the customers are focused on. You're going to see that as we dig into some of these, uh, some of these examples. And then, of course, another great example up in the top, top left with Amazon, just to show the scale of our, our technology, who they process over 40,000 hours of audio on a daily basis. And as we process the audio, uh, we have that available for them to be able to start digging into and mining uh, within about two hours of us having uh, received the audio. So what I want to do is I'm going to dig into a handful of uh, customers and just highlight uh, some of the successes that the customers have had, uh, first and foremost being British Gas. And as, as we go through many of these, if some of them resonate with, uh, with your organization, what you will find up on our website is that uh, a lot of these case studies are available as short white papers. They get into some of the details that uh, I'll be focusing in on, uh, but uh, as well as some other uh, wins that they got in utilizing the technology. Of course, most folks are familiar with British Gas, I'm sure, uh, at least a, a fairly familiar name, a big uh, energy company in the UK. Very large uh, contact center uh, in terms of the number of agents that they have there. They had a number of challenges that they were focused upon in trying to uh, address and leverage speech analytics for. As you can see, things like being able to improve, not only improve agent performance, but sustain that. It's great when you have a coaching session and someone takes the, the input that you give them and they go and then they apply it, but making sure that they continue to apply it over an extended period of time uh, in order to, to have the long-term gains, and that was one of the issues that they were having. You know, first call resolution, they were seeing quite a few repeat callers that probably could have been uh, addressed uh, in a single call had the agents been able to better handle that. And of course, other things like average handle time, uh, upsell effectiveness in terms of other services that they offered, and then of course, overall, one of their biggest issues was agent scoring. and. and you know, just the difficult process that uh, they had in addressing agent scoring when you're sampling just a, a very small number of calls per agent. And, and the, the, the chart that uh, you see here on the right that we're going to build out uh, is just one example of that. You know, using the traditional review process, when they looked at sales conversions uh, across agents, just focusing in, in here as an example on two agents, you know, Common sense would tell you that you know agent one is a, a better performer than agent two, uh, only because they really couldn't get a great amount of insight into what was going on uh, beyond just the basic conversion rate of sales. But through the the use of speech analytics, 
they were actually able to get down and, and understand quite a bit more about what's going on within the agent level. As an example, as you look at this here, what, what you see is that from a promotional perspective, uh, agent one was promoting to, their, to the people that they were speaking with or uh, that person was speaking with 60% of the time, uh, basically just throwing it out there with every individual that they spoke with, whereas agent two was much more selective in promoting uh, and upselling. And as a result of that, the effectiveness is, was actually uh, the complete reverse. Uh, agent two was, was finding and, and sensing better opportunities to pitch the upsell uh, to make it a more effective uh, promotion as opposed to agent one who, as I said before, was just throwing it out there to everyone. And of course, as we know, when we all call contact centers, when you hear a pitch every time that you call, those pitches really become less effective. And it, the net result was that, you know, in reality, the better seller in this particular case, as they were able to get deeper insight through speech analytics, was agent two, uh, because they were had a much better conversion rate as a result of the number of times that they were pitching the, the software. And this just uh, you know digs in a little bit further into the effectiveness of you know, the promotions, the conversions, and the average handle time results that they were recognizing as a result of utilizing the uh, speech analytics technology. Ultimately, as you can see on the left, you know, their return on investment was 14 times uh, the, the initial investment that they put into the technology as a result of being able to you know, reduce their, their repeat callers, uh, significantly decrease the average handle time, and address other issues that they had going on within their contact center. Now, of course, you know, what, we're, what we want to do here today is we're going through these. We're trying to give a, a cross-section of different vertical markets. Uh, you know, so some of these may apply to you, but certainly as, as part of George's uh, role and my role is to help is understand more about your operations and how the technology might be applicable. Uh, as we look at, the, as an example here, Southwest Credit, which is a collections agency, you know, they, they're, one of their big issues that they were trying to address more than anything was uh, this escalation issue that they were dealing with. So uh, in general, you know, Southwest Credit following up on, with debtors on uh, money owed on behalf of uh, uh, some other organization. Essentially, they were getting, uh, among other issues, they were trying to address an issue where they were having a large number of uh, calls that uh, were escalating, and they really didn't understand what was going on. And now that the CFPB is uh, is really focusing in on the financial industry, whether it's the banks, uh, mortgage companies, as, and as well here, uh, collection agencies, uh, they had to deal with compliance issues. That, and so they saw a significant increase uh, occurring, as you can see in the chart here, uh, relative to escalation complaints, and they came to us to uh, investigate how uh, speech analytics could help address compliance issues uh, as well as to improve the effectiveness of their, of their uh, agents. So the issue that uh, ultimately we were able to help them identify was that uh, as we analyzed the technology, excuse me, analyzed their calls leveraging the technology, we used a component of our, of our solution known as Topic Miner. And Topic Miner, unlike many other speech analytics products in the marketplace where those other solutions, you have to define everything that you're looking for, Topic Miner is for organic discovery, helping you identify those things that you don't know to look for. And what we were able to help Southwest Credit identify within their calls was that there was a large number of uh, a large number of calls where language being used around wrong numbers and harassment. And what we were able to identify as we helped them dig into, into the results was that you know, agents were getting connected with uh, a debtor. Uh, they were the, being told by the debtor that they had the wrong number, they weren't reaching the right individual, and of course the, the agent would hang up and then move on to their next call. 
the problem was they weren't properly dispositioning the results in their CRM. And so when the auto dialer came back around to that phone number again, uh, maybe the next day, the next week, another agent was talk calling that individual. And after a certain period of time, uh, they were feeling harassed and hence the, the increase. What we were able to do was help them identify that. They implemented training, better training for the agents to make sure that the calls were properly dispositioned within their CRM. And they were able to see a significant decrease uh, as a result of that uh, around the, the harassment complaints. And you can see, as you, as you can here in the, the last chart, they saw overall regulatory complaints uh, drop by 33% in the time frame in a very short uh, period of time. And of course, for collection agencies, you know, that ex complaints and things of that nature exposes them to fines and other things uh, that can be detrimental to their business. So another, another case study here uh, of, uh, of this being a, a large technology vendor, um, as George mentioned, you know, this particular customer, you know, they're, they're a little bit different. So uh, in the previous two examples, uh, you know, this is a different, different customer in that they not only had their own contact center agents, but uh, like many large organizations, they also outsourced a number of their calls to uh, other third parties that were working on their behalf. So they had to have the ability to oversee not only their agents, but analyze and assess the quality and effectiveness of the third parties working on their behalf. And that was one of the core issues that they were, that they were focused on. Of course, they, the, one of the things that they also brought forward to us was the fact that they were using uh, uh, multiple call recording platforms, which presented another challenge for us. Uh, the good thing being for them is that we've integrated with over 50 different call recorders. And so it, you know, uh, it was a, an issue and a problem that we could deal with quite easily. And of course, they were getting a lot of pressure from their shareholders, as, as most large companies do, uh, you know, with a focus on trying to contain cost and maximize shareholder value. So when we looked at the, what they were trying to accomplish here, you know, they had a number of things that they wanted to focus in on. First and foremost, they wanted to be able to uh, lo listen to and assess, you know, the voice of the customer, uh, as well as, you know, within their own contact center and the outsourcers, and then be all, also able to uh, pull into that CRM-related data. They also wanted to, as Scott mentioned early on, leverage multiple channels of, of the technology out there that, that exists for them that they've been using to interact with their customers. So whether it's chat or blogs or social media, they wanted to be able to pull in other types of uh, communication channels in order to assess uh, their interactions with their customers, especially if a chat maybe started out as the first interaction escalated into a call and be able to follow that entire customer journey. And then lastly, you know, being able to measure their agents across the company's key performance indicators and identify areas where you know, they can leverage the business intelligence for improvements in operations uh, on an ongoing basis. So in this particular customer example, you know, one of the issues that they were dealing with was, as I bring up the chart here, one of the issues that they were dealing with was within their outsourcer community, uh, the, the agents were you know, unnecessarily verifying account information. And so as you can see here in the chart, you know, when they put in the corrective measures to uh, retrain the agents in terms of how to properly verify account information, uh, that learning stuck, as I mentioned early on. Uh, you know, that type of thing will stick for a little while. But as you can see here, you know, they had a, a, a decline followed by an increase and it was noticeable by being able to utilize speech analytics. Uh, and as a result of that, they were able to uh, implement a, a, a second directive to stop that behavior, uh, which was more impactful and resulted in, a, in an overall decline over a longer period of time. And for them, as you can see, they, they, this had such a huge impact from a business perspective 
uh, they were able to realize a, a return on their investment in just a matter of uh, two weeks. You know, especially when you look at the significant reduction in average handle time that was in part being driven uh, by these unnecessary procedures that they were that they were uh, replicating. So another case study here, uh, Nautilus, household name, you know, manufacturer of fitness equipment. Uh, they, they were an interesting customer that came on board uh, a little over a year ago. Um, they, at least for me, uh, for the time period that I've been here, they're probably the one that I've seen have one of the fastest return on investments. Uh, you know, they had a number of different challenges and issues that they were dealing with within their contact center. Uh, which was, uh, you know, in front of the, their contact center agents was an IVR. They had issues of calls being routed to the incorrect agents. Uh, they had issues around a, a large number of abandons uh, within their within their uh, calls that were coming into their environment. And so, you know, they leveraged speech analytics to help address those and a multitude of issues. And and you can kind of see the impact that speech analytics had on their operations, especially as we look at the at the charts. Uh, the first chart, as you can see here, comparing year over year, so 2012, uh, average handle time for the month of January, February, and March, and the results once they implemented uh, speech analytics and learned, got some uh, significant insight into uh, agent behavior, they were able to impact the average handle time and drive that down uh, month, on, month over month uh, for the previous year. And then the other one you can see here, uh, again, the, the issues that they were having around calls getting routed to the uh, wrong agent, and then, of course, the, the time that it was taking for calls to get to the proper agent. Uh, as you again look at 2012 versus 2013 for the first three months, you can see significant service level changes where the, the blue represents the number of calls that were answered in, uh, I think it's 20, 20 seconds or less. And then the green represents the abandon rate. So you can see uh, the result of implementing If people can hear me, this is Scott speaking. Hold on a second. And Andrew is just going to dial back in. Sorry for this uh, technical glitch. Yeah, can you hear me, Scott? I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened to the audio, but uh, I didn't have to dial back in. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, uh, where, where did we lose me? I think just after the top couple charts uh, on the novel. Oh, list. okay. Yeah, uh, could could be just a blip in our uh, in our uh, telephony system here. So uh, I'll, I'll just re recap again from the average talk time, uh, as you can see here, 2012 uh, as opposed to 2013, driving down the average handle time as they were ga able to gain insight into uh, you know agent behavior, and then the service levels again over here, 2012 versus 2013. Uh, the blue representing calls answer, percentage of calls answered in 20 seconds or less being driven up as they improve their operations. And then the green representing the uh, abandons, percentage of abandons driving down uh, again month over month in, in uh, comparison to the previous year. So we'll move on to the next, next one here. So the last one, uh, Saveology. Um, might not be a household name uh, for, for all folks, but uh, Saveology is a BPO as well as providing a, uh, one of these deal of the day kind of uh, uh, buying sites. Uh, but the, the core focus for them for utilizing speech analytics 
uh, was focused on their uh, direct-to-consumer marketing. So uh, Savology uh, working on behalf of uh, cable companies and, and others in terms of uh, you know, marketing and then fulfilling those, those uh, sales opportunities. And what they were looking for was a, an ability to really fine tune the the advertising strategies. You know, identifying what stra what what advertising and marketing worked and what wasn't. You know, f measuring the effectiveness of the sales pitch uh, of the of the agents, and really needing to understand better. You know, the reasons behind buyers and non buyers and the lost sales opportunities. So really, sales focused uh, situations here. And for them, you know, the, there were a number of results, and uh, you know, I, I love I love some of these uh, results as we'll go through these. You know, one good example the the pitch rate. You know, if you ask any any agent, any salesperson, hey, you know, are you remembering to you know promote this or or you know remembering to promote the, this upsell or this cross sell opportunity, and and you'll generally hear from most agents, oh yeah yeah, you know, and. And uh, in their particular case, they were, you know, they, in querying their agents, the, the general response was somewhere in the 90% uh, of the agents were indicating that they were doing it all the time. And when in reality, when they were able to dig into uh, real, real behavior, agent behavior within the contact center, they were finding that it was less, less than 50% of the time. Uh, so they are able to implement new training programs focused in on increasing the pitch rate uh, and really building an incentive plan based upon, you know, delivering proper disclosures to the customers, you know, and leading really to reduction in, in uh, you know, in customer abandonment. And some of the things that they leveraged, I talked about it earlier, uh, um, relative to Southwest Credit, this tag cloud or, or topic miner. Uh, Savology used it significantly because they because we have the ability to find things that you're not necessarily looking for with this with the with the topic miner. They were able to leverage it for keywords and phrases that they were able to use from a marketing perspective uh, that were going on within the tech support calls that they were handling. Another thing that they were able to do, as I mentioned before, it, it was focused in on you know, the pitch rate of their agents and identifying, uh, you know, the frequency with by which they were actually delivering their cross-sell and upsell opportunities and being able to drive that up across all the agents, which in turn had a significant impact. Uh, they were able to increase sales by less than 3%, three, three, excuse me, increase sales by 3% in less than five months uh, by a identifying uh, the lost sales opportunities, really, when it comes down to it, lost sales opportunities when they're not doing the proper pitches. And then uh, the last thing, you know, really just around some of the core capabilities are, of our technology and being able to leverage what we refer to as categories, and I'll get into that in just a moment, but being able to build very specific uh, a specific search language within their uh, interaction sets to be able to find scenarios where there are you know infractions within their contact center you know for example people getting left on hold for long periods of time and other things that are outside uh, the the service levels that they that they may need to provide on behalf of the company that they're that they're selling for So all of these these different case studies, you know, they, they kind of fall into two real core buckets. And this what you see here is a, a survey that was done uh, focused on the contact center, and and you know where organizations were looking to optimize their their individual contact center, and really you kind of can lump these into two buckets, if you will. One focused in on the agent customer interaction, and we saw some examples uh, in those. You know, five previous uh, uh, case studies uh, focused in on things like first call resolution or improving the customer experience uh, or just basically improving the, the overall professionalism of the agents. And then the other aspect of it, you know, the other bucket here is improving the quality of the uh, supervisory capacity, you know, whether it's improving the ability for the supervisors from a coaching standpoint, you know, of giving them more quality time with the agents as opposed to spending a lot of time listening to calls, which takes away from that coaching and supervisory time. 
uh, and also you know improving the the overall ability to capture more calls and therefore improve listen to more calls and score more calls as a result of using speech analytics where you're assessing possibly on a hundred percent of the interactions being able to improve the quality process overall so when we look at you know performance management you know if I look back at some of the the previous case studies you know there are a, a wide range of uh, examples of where agents are impacting whether it's sales or collection or churn or customer retention you know promotions and things of that nature the problem is today's traditional methods that a lot of organizations utilize manually listening to calls manually scoring calls you know there's problems with that more than anything it's it's focused around the the fact that a lot of times you can't get to a statistically significant number of calls to really assess what's going on in, in the contact center it, part of it is it's very expensive it, it's very resource intensive you know you can't listen to calls any faster really than than uh, the normal pace at which <coughs> excuse me an agent and a customer speak and then of course you you have the subjectivity that uh, results as well uh, from that you know uh, I think of uh, the example of British gas where a small you know looking at just the conversion performance showed one one agent performing poorly compared to another when in reality the 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 exact opposite was occurring uh, and of course if uh, you know someone has the unfortunateness of only getting two or three calls scored and you know one of them is lousy and therefore you know basically 67 percent of their calls were good you know is that a really a good measurement of agent performance so automation such as speech analytics helps to improve all of that you know it gives the ability to you know more objectively and consistently score each and every interaction in a, a larger uh, a larger number of interactions Uh, in addition, you know, you're able to deliver continuous feedback to the agents. You know, if we think back to uh, the example of the technology company where there was an improvement in agent performance and then a decline in agent performance in terms of how they were interacting with the customers where they had to reinforce it, you know, the agents here are able to consistently see through uh, one of the tools, My Eureka, uh, how they're performing on a consistent basis without having to wait in between uh, coaching sessions to see how, how the changes are impacting their performance. Speech analytics also gives an organization the ability to target the coaching. So uh, as you look back at the British Gas example, where you know, the agent one uh, was basically just throwing the pitches out there to every customer, many times inappropriately, uh, whereas understanding uh, their, how they're doing their selling or how they're doing their pitching gives the ability to you know, better target where they need to work on from an improvement perspective. And the results ultimately are, are measurable, as, as you could see uh, in a number of the different results that were uh, in each of the case studies. So I want to just give you, a, a, I think we've got a, another slide after this, and then we're going to, to uh, jump over to Q&A. Uh, just a reminder as we're going through here, if you have questions, uh, please use the, uh, the uh, tool within, the, within your GoToMeeting panel. But just to give you an idea in terms of how the Call Miner platform and technology operates, uh, as, as we talked about earlier, you know, we can handle a number of different uh, communication channels, uh, whether it's social media, text, um, email, or, or phone calls and things of that nature. But we're going to, re we generally will take in whatever the interaction set is, and along with that, uh, associated metadata. Metadata being, you know, what information is known or captured as part of each and every interaction. Uh, and what we do from there is we take that audio, uh, we process it against a speech recognition engine, and we generate a transcript uh, of what took place between the agent and the, the customer. And then we do some acoustic measurements along with that. Uh, acoustic measurements looking at things like, like silence. 
You know, is a customer being left on hold too long and giving you the ability to identify those situations? Is there agitation uh, or dissatisfaction within the, within the interaction? So we do these various acoustic measurements and then follow that up go, by going through what's referred to as a categorization process. And, and the best way to think about categories is that they're, they're basically saved searches of things you want to look for. Uh, so whether it's you know, listening for, for language around somebody who wants to cancel service or you know, listening for uh, dissatisfaction. And, and something like dissatisfaction, as an example, might be a combination of both language that was spoken and uh, acoustic measurements such as agitation that we're able to detect on the, that interaction. So we basically go through and we categorize all of the different elements within that particular uh, interaction. And then we follow that up with a scoring process. So taking and applying uh, different measurements based upon what, how you uh, would, would define within your manual scoring process today, but applying that in an automated manner. And then putting either labels or numbers associated with those so you can generate a scorecard for that interaction, which collectively uh, builds a scorecard for the agent from an overall performance perspective. And then we deliver those results in a couple of different ways. Uh, for one, uh, since as I'm focusing here, I'm focused in on uh, post-call analytics. So taking all of that across a, a broad set of interactions and helping to identify trends and discover things that are taking place within the interactions that we weren't aware of, producing reports such as an agent scorecard, and also providing feedback uh, through something like My Eureka, which is a way that supervisors, executives, agents, and others can basically access the information that's being generated by the platform and being able to drill into that and see what's going on in the contact center. And then the other way that we deliver it is through alerts and, and real-time monitoring. Uh, real-time is, is an area which is getting a lot of uh, focus in some, some uh, sectors within the market, uh, but it's a way that we have the ability to provide, as the call is happening, uh, information to a supervisor and or an agent in terms of what's going on in that intera interaction, especially if it's uh, something that a, a supervisor might need to uh, interrupt the call or jump into the call and pr provide assistance on. So uh, since I bring up real time, and uh, I think it's good just to make sure everyone understands the difference between uh, analytics, uh, which is what we really talked about in terms of a lot of the case studies there, uh, and also this, this new real time monitoring uh, environment that has come up over the past year. And we've got a number of customers that use our real time monitoring especially in environments where compliance within the call uh, is real important. So, you know, analytics, you know, you're looking at, uh, at an overall performance evaluation, you know, looking at things like, you know, performance around first call resolution, looking for trends and, and things of that nature that are going on within the contact center. As a, as a good example of that, you know, uh, we had one customer who, uh, was trying to understand uh, if this was a retail customer who uh, customers could go to their website, upload pictures, put together you know holiday cards and that, and the cards would show up in the mail, and uh, all of a sudden the contact center was getting a lot of uh, a spike in calls, but they didn't understand why. Through the use of analytics, they were able to, they had they had the technology previous to that problem, uh, it took them 11 days manually to discover what the issue was. Whereas once they ran that contact set through speech analytics uh, without telling us what, what the problem was, we were able to find the problem in less than two hours. Uh, so a significant, a significant ability to look at a broader set in a faster period of time uh, was able to you know, what the issue was was focused around uh, font type and font size that people couldn't read the cards. So it was a huge impact on their holiday card business that could have been resolved in a much quicker manner 
uh, through speech analytics, which could have identified the web problem that they were having. Whereas real time is focused upon, as I said before, what's going on in the interaction. Uh, are the agents following proper script procedures? Are they following proper uh, compliance requirements? Uh, you know, if there's an upsell, cross-sell, are they following the, the you know, next step best action that they should take because of certain things that were uh, detected in the interaction. So there's really two different environments. Uh, and in some cases, some customers are utilizing analytics and real time for two different purposes uh, within the same environment. So, the, so in summary here, uh, we've, we've focused mostly on Eureka. Uh, which is the core of uh, the, the platform. My Eureka, which is how we share information with supervisors, with agents, with the executives. Basically, it's the way that uh, the non-business analyst is able to consume what's going on in the contact center and be able to drill into it and, and identify uh, you know, information that they want to pull out of there, whether it's agent behavior, compliance, and things of that nature. And then the, the last one that we were just talking about a moment ago, uh, Eureka Live, which is the, the real-time, as calls are happening, uh, alerting system that ties into the, the same core functionality that, is, that uh, Eureka is built upon. And lastly, uh, Redactor. Uh, we didn't really talk too much about it. it. It is one of the core functionalities built into the application. Uh, it's also something that's available uh, as a standalone application for organizations that are in need of PCI compliance, uh, whether it's compliance for PCI of archived or historical audio that, that they're storing, or for organizations like Grubhub that I mentioned early on that need to have PCI compliance of calls uh, in going forward. Uh, and with that, I'm going to throw it back to George. Hey you guys, um, <clears throat> so thank you. Um, thank you everybody for joining. Um, just wanted to, to let you know, uh, obviously, uh, if you'd like to engage in further talks about the uh, Call Miners uh, Speed Talent Solution Suite, you can certainly call me. Uh, there's my contact information. Uh, absolutely would love to have a discovery call uh, and a demo as well. Uh, so again, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, that's my direct number and my email address. I'd love to hear from you and uh, hopefully we can uh, you know, we can uh, do some business together uh, uh, and uh, help you improve your call center practice via speech analytics. Great. Thanks, thanks George. Um, so just uh, getting into our questions now, we have a few questions posted here. Um, and the first one uh, I will answer um, for the, the group, and the question was, when you guys employ a new client, do you have employees on site at the contact center? Um, and the answer is it depends. It depends on the nature and the size of the particular engagement. So for what call miner sells in terms of uh, what we would call an enterprise uh, client, and, and that's typically um, starts at around 250 hours per day of audio, um, or you know maybe the equivalent of uh, 70 to 100 agents and above. Um, then uh, the two primary ways in which we are on site are one is for training, so we offer enterprise training. Uh, which is, I think, close to a, a week-long uh, training session for all the key stakeholders that would be involved, uh, and that is done on site. Uh, and then, of course, our project managers and our um, client relationship directors uh, who are also on site. And those client relationship directors, or CRDs, are um, uh, basically account managers that are assigned specifically to your account to help make sure you get value uh, out of your speech analytics implementation and that you're implementing a, an effective speech analytics program. Um, so they would be on site for various kickoff meetings and conversations. Uh, aside from that, we also do offer, while we are primarily a software company, not a services company, uh, we offer what's called a accelerator package. And that is essentially an assigned business intelligence uh, analyst uh, from CallMiner to work with you for uh, several weeks uh, during the initial rollout of speech analytics uh, to help put in place your speech analytics program to identify some quick wins so you can uh, show uh, 
uh, and demonstrate ROI, uh, and then lastly to uh, help you on the path towards uh, the core objective. Uh, for example, if you're interested in automating your scorecard, helping to assist you with elements of building some of that automation uh, and also working hand in hand with your analysts so that they can kind of pick up that ball and run with it uh, beyond that. Um, that particular uh, engagement, the accelerator engagement, is, is not on site, um, and most of it, it, it is done remote. Um, but certainly, as I said, some of those initial discovery meetings uh, could be uh, on site if it is more effective to do so. Um, I've got another question. I guess I'll just uh, throw it to Andrew. Very common question we get. Uh, I won't name the specific brand, but the question is, does this work with my existing uh, recording system, or do I need to purchase something from CallMiner or Primero? Yep, yeah, it, it, exactly. Uh, something we hear all the time. And uh, as I mentioned early on, you know, we've integrated with over 50 different recorders. Uh, obviously, every recorder has uh, uh, different audio quality, so results may, may vary, but in general, we we can take in audio in a variety of different formats, uh, Wave, Box, MP3, even, we've even worked with custom uh, versions of, of audio formats. Uh, so you know, generally not a problem for being able to take in and uh, process that, uh, you know, whatever may be in, in existence. Okay, and then I'll, I'll just throw the inverse question over to George, which is, you know, what if we don't have call recording um, and I think you stated this at the beginning of your presentation. Uh, in your hosted uh, environment, is this something that you also sell? It, it, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a great question. It, it's, it's, you know, really what we pride ourselves is in being a solutions provider. So, you know, there's not one size fits all. Not everybody's the same. Um, so, yeah, for those clients that don't have a recording solution in place, we can absolutely assist you in finding one. Uh, if you guys, for example, need to upgrade your existing uh, platform, then we can also uh, help you with that as well. So, you know, we... we um, you know, what we like to do is just engage uh, kind of as in, in a consulting capacity, uh, understand what your current uh, environment is, uh, what's required, and then and just go from there. You know, so, yeah, we can absolutely assist you in identifying a suitable recording platform if you don't have one or if you need to upgrade the one you currently have. Great, thanks. Um, so next question was um, uh, basically asking what, what's involved within the implementation phase, and Maybe before I pass it on to anyone, it's worth mentioning that this is software that can be installed either on premise uh, for larger clients or commonly delivered as a hosted uh, software as a service, uh, which is one area that Primero uh, excels in. Um, so George, did you want to comment on implementation process from a, a Primero standpoint? Yeah, yes, I'll gladly comment. I, and again, I'll reiterate, you know, the, the idea is not to shoehorn anybody into any specific uh, delivery uh, model. It could be it could be a SaaS, uh, cloud-based, or premise. Again, that's going to you know depend on unique you know client requirements. Um, so I'll answer the question, and obviously, and and the complexity of your call center practice. So I'll answer it in the context of SaaS uh, for the SMB space. Um, you could typically expect anywhere from a 30 to 60 day implementation window, uh, and, and obviously some of the things that are involved there is setting up the customer instance. Uh, setting up uh, the audio recording, metadata, call data feed, whether it's FTP. In some cases, you know, we'll have to create a, uh, a custom extractor and, and obviously uh, offer analytics tuning, testing, validation services. Uh, and then what we're going to look for, you know, this is really a continuous improvement process. Uh, so it's something you're going to uh, be looking to uh, improve, uh, track measure, et cetera, over, over time. But what we want to do is identify quick wins in that initial, you know, 60-day period to get you uh, an immediate ROI. So, you know, that's typically, you know, what we'll do um, is sit down with you, go over, you know, what are your immediate challenges, whether it's reduced average handle time or uh, improved first call resolution, and just focus on those uh, key uh, metrics and initiatives and just uh, make sure that you, uh, we address those first and you develop a very rapid ROI. After that, you know, we can provide ongoing assistance, uh, you know, tuning, tweaking, look for other ways that we could uh, help you, assist you in, uh, in your call center practice. In terms of uh, services and support, it's a common question that we get asked. You know, you could consume uh, uh, support services uh, as, as little or as much as you want. You know, we can offer, it could be as little as training and using the, uh, the out-of-the-box custom templates. You can start out with that. Or you could uh, even engage us in a, uh, you know, monthly managed service capacity or a dedicated, you know, business analyst. So it really depends on the opportunity, not, you know, one, one size fits all. 
but you know that's where we come in as a consultant and help uh, craft uh, you know a solution that best fits your business requirements. Okay. Great. Thanks again. And one more question that I'll, I'll take this time. Uh, and you you kind of alluded to this, George, in your last response, and and that is, um, do you offer targeted <laughs> solutions? Um, so. Uh, Andrew went over a number of different uh, vertical case studies uh, in different areas, and we do have three primary targeted solutions that we offer. Um, and what what we mean by a solution at CallMiner is that there are out of the box categories and scores that are relevant to uh, sort of the function of your call center. So those targeted solutions include collection and compliance for collection. So looking at things like language that uh, is either restricted or required according to the Fair Debt. Collectors Protection Act, um, uh, and and you know things that are of concern and, and auditable by the CFPB. Uh, we also offer a customer service targeted package. So this is typically inbound contact centers that are taking customer service calls, uh, and there's a concern about the professionalism uh, of uh, and performance of those agents and how they are servicing those clients and how those clients are responding. Uh, and then the last one is a sales effectiveness package. Uh, which uh, looks at uh, you know common uh, sales type activity and, and strong sales performance, things like uh, touting benefits and and uh, recognizing or identifying objections, uh, so that uh, the agent's performance against handling those agent uh, those objections uh, can, can be found. So uh, it's really, as I said, primarily uh, collection, um, uh, customer service, and sales. Uh, those are the functional areas, but of course we have a lot of experience over the years in different verticals and, and language uh, patterns uh, that are relevant to uh, different verticals. Um, so that was the last question that we got in. If there are any other questions, don't hesitate to contact us by email. We'll be happy to respond or reach directly out to George. Uh, and uh, we will close this session with just a reminder that this will be recorded. And uh, keep an eye out in your inbox for that link to uh, the recorded uh, playback of this webinar. Thank you everybody for your time.